My name is Alex Dorge, and I'm an Ansible Solutions Specialist, and I'm going to be walking through how I can leverage the new capabilities of the Ansible Automation Platform to do automated Red Hat Insights remediation, and really what that means. So what do we actually need to make this all work? So it's really a combination of the Ansible Automation Platform with Automation Controller, the new event-driven Ansible Controller, as well as Red Hat Insights. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about Red Hat Insights for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, because it's really the operating system I'm going to be focusing on for this. So how does this all work? So with Red Hat Insights, it has the ability to detect different things that may be wrong with your Red Hat Enterprise Linux instance, whether this is malware that's been detected, a new CVE that's been generated, all kinds of different capability. And since this is per host, it gives you the capability to only apply updates to the specific systems that need it. Insights is now also an event source for event-driven Ansible, so I can set that up both in console.redhat.com as well as event-driven Ansible to be able to talk to each other so I can have that trigger when a new virtual machine is created or a new issue has been detected that needs to be remediated. Obviously, I can adjust this on the playbook side of things to only remediate automatically more severe issues or maybe I just want to create a ServiceNow incident. It's really as flexible as the automation needs to be. But in this case, I'm going to use Ansible Automation Platform and Automation Controller to reach out to Insights, use that capability to automatically create the remediation playbook, sync it into the Ansible Automation Platform, and run it to a full detection to remediation with no human intervention required. So what does this look like from the rulebook side of things in event-driven Ansible? So this is roughly what I have for a rulebook. I have other conditions specifically looking for malware and other pieces, but in this case, is I want to focus on CVEs, which are of an event type of new advisory. So I'm going to pass a bunch of payload to the playbook that I'm using so I can know the exact event type, what the context is, the host that this is running on. And if you notice, I have the execution strategy set to parallel. because if I have multiple hosts that have CVEs and they get multiple alerts, I want to be able to respond to all of them, not just the first that comes in. So in this case, I'm just listening on port 5002, and I'll just be waiting to see any alerts that get created. So let's run into a demonstration with a new host that I've created, but I've not registered to Insights yet to see how this all looks. So first, let's look at what I have set up in console.redhat.com for the integration with Insights back to event-driven Ansible. So I've already created an Ansible EDA with the type of event-driven Ansible. So as you can see, it's already set up. I've got an endpoint with ngrok here just because I don't have my event-driven Ansible server publicly accessible. So this does give me the option to have that all set up. And I've also already set up the different triggers in the notifications to basically trigger on various events. In this case, it'll trigger on a few different advisories. And this is how I had that actually set up to communicate on specific events that Insights determines. So I've spun up a server called insights.redhat.com. As you can see, I don't have that server currently registered and I don't currently have any remediations available to me. So all of this is going to be brand new, but I do at least have my event-driven Ansible server running with my Insights rulebook ready and waiting. So let's take that server and just register the client. And this will go through that process of actually registering to Insights and pushing the data to Insights for the first time, which based on the fact that this is a slightly older RHEL 9 template, does have a CVE associated with it, and that will cause the trigger to actually start my automation. So once it's done and does the collection, that's when Insights will determine that a CVE and new advisory is existing, push that webhook, which will launch then the automation to Adventure of Enhanced Bowl, which will then immediately trigger into Automation Controller, because it will determine that a new advisory does exist. So again, this gives a lot of flexibility as I look into what automation can happen, but let's see, you know, go into the history. I can see all of my different Insights events, and obviously I've done this quite a bit in the past, but I can scroll to the bottom and see, yes, a new job has actually started with a new advisory as of right now. So I can jump into Automation Controller, check my new jobs, and see that that advisory has actually kicked off a new playbook. So what is this actually doing? So if I go into the playbook itself, I do have basically a job template running. It's gonna create a list so I can see all the different advisories from the debugging side of things and I can reach back out to Insights to actually get the full list of advisories and create a more detailed list than what was pushed via that webhook. Once I do that, for me specifically, I wanna look at more severe issues. So I don't wanna do every CVE automatically. I wanna do CVEs with greater than or equal to three for the uh, severity. And then by doing that, I then go through the process, if it is that great, A, notify my chat program, which in my case is Mattermost, B, generate a new playbook in console.redout.com so I can do the remediation. Then I want to sync it into my automation platform 
sorry, already have an existing project set up to pull from Red Hat Insights. And then I want to perform my remediation. I have this performing a list because I may have multiple remediations that may need to occur if I have more than one CVE greater than or equal to three. So all this is doing is updating that job template with the exact playbook name that's generated and then launching it. So it will loop through that as many times as needed. And then it will update and let me know that the particular task is done. Or if no CVE is greater than or equal to three, it will just notify me that nothing happened. So I can go into my chat program and I can see it actually did detect one CVE with a severity of greater than or equal to three, which means it's actually going through that process now of syncing in that automation. So I can see that the playbook has been running. Obviously, if I wanna look at the specific details, I can see exactly what the CVEs are, the advisory ID, all that information. But in this case, I'm actually going through the project process already of launching that project update to pull in that new playbook into the automation platform, run the automation, which in this case would be whatever the CVE requires, which could include a reboot based on what insights requires, and then closing out that ticket. So let's go back into the jobs and see what that remediation playbook did. In this case, it gathered pack, check for updates, which just ran a simple command to check to see if there is an update for that particular CVE. It goes through the upgrade process, which again, just does an update. And I can see updated multiple packages to newer versions. Needed to see if a reboot was necessary and handle that reboot and verify the server was back up and reran insights. So I don't have to worry about that CVE re-triggering or showing up on additional scans. So I can actually go in, as I said before, there were no remediations here, but I can reload this page. And I'll now see that that CVE has a remediation associated with it. I can from here download or archive the playbook. So it's still available for me to view. So if I need auditability, all of that's here, as well as the auditability of the job run itself. The beauty of having this all through the automation platform is I already have my credentials stored in here. I already might have my inventories pulling from multiple sources. In this case, the host happens to live on VMware, but my automation is set up where I could run this exact same job for right at virtualization, VMware, Azure, really any hypervisor that I have set up in my environment. And the credentials are already stored in automation controller, so I'm not doing any additional effort. And to note, was this actually closed out, at least notification wise, I can say yes, the exact CVE details were passed. So the end user knows that there are no additional remediations required, at least of ones that are greater than or equal to three. I can obviously increase this process, add in ServiceNow tickets. If you do want that manual intervention to wait, maybe I wanna push this to a ticket or to a change window, I can do that. But for this, I specifically want to have the ability to immediately remediate high severity CVEs with zero intervention. And that's exactly what this process is able to do. So I'll place in the description down below a blog that walks through setting up insights, both on the console.redout.com side, as well as the rule books. It is a little bit old. There is that new integration, as you saw in console.reddit.com with the event-driven Ansible type. I also have my GitHub with the rulebook that I've specifically used, so that will be linked down below, which does use the event-driven Ansible Insights source plugin, so you can see how that works and not just a generic webhook. And then I also do have my remediation repository, so all of that is available to you as well if you want to see exactly how I went through the process of reaching out to console.reddit.com to get the list of CVEs, automatically create those playbooks, sync it into the automation platform, and most importantly, run the remediation. So all of that is available to you as an end user. So hopefully this is a valuable look at how we can start doing some automatic remediation of CVEs and really leveraging the full Red Hat suite of technologies for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Red Hat Insights, and the automation platform together so I can ensure that critical vulnerabilities are patched immediately and I don't have to worry about tracking them down and figuring out what those remediation steps are because Insights provides that capability out of the box with auto-created playbooks for me. Hopefully this was helpful and, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Click the image on the left to watch another video or click my picture on the right to subscribe.